I mean, beyond playing Rutgers, you watch this Big Ten as it unfolds. Man, there's some good teams and a lot of stuff, that, a lot of talent to that. Is, is it as good as you thought it was going to be? Well, the good thing is the Big Ten had a really good non-conference. And so from a numbers perspective, because when you talk an NCAA tournament, which we all want to go to, it's a numbers game. Um, you know, and I'm watching last night, I'm watching uh, Washington beat Utah, and we need Washington to turn out to be a good win, and I think it will be. Um, you know, and I think Washington will compete for a Pac-12 title. Um, so the more and more good opportunities that you get to win, the better, from a numbers perspective. Um, losing doesn't really hurt you anymore, as insane as it sounds. Now, you need opportunities to win, obviously. So there's so many good opportunities for us on our schedule uh, to go get quality wins. So that's great for uh, us. Uh, but it's going to be a battle. Uh, Rutgers is a well-coached, physical, really, really tough team, very good defensively. Um, so it's a great opportunity for us. Um, it, well, and they beat them too with their best player getting hurt uh, early. And you know it was anybody's game until the end. Um, you know Ohio State missed a three to to send it to overtime, but I you know Geo Baker just made a big play at the end. But it was anybody's game. I mean it was right there and home environment, good crowd. Um, but Rutgers will beat you up. Really, really physical. Very big. Um, I you probably don't want us to talk too much about free throws, right? No, I mean, it is what it is. You know, you know, the problem with the free throws was, clearly, I mean, when you shoot 39%, uh, you got to also understand it was three guys. You know, it was it was Amir, Murph, and Daniel that were the bulk of it, not to blame them. But, you know, they were the ones that missed the majority of them. Um, the problem I had with the free throws was I thought it zapped our energy. Um, you know, I thought the game changed – when we missed open shots and we missed free throws. And I hated the fact that we didn't fight through that. Uh, it just seemed like we were like, ugh. Um, so we've got to be tougher than that. You know, I mean, we're not a 39% free throw shooting team. Uh, we're better than that. But regardless of anything else, like, we got to have the toughness to be able to get a stop and move on and just get over it. Um, you know, it's like a, a great golfer. You know, you, you think you got a birdie putt and you – slide a pass and you get a double bogey like you have to move on and uh, our guys got to do that in your tenure this has been a, a strength of the team is getting to the, the far line yeah i think it's i think it's early i i think that it was kind of a perfect storm and it snowballed uh last game you know i'm not concerned with it i really not i mean D daniel it'll take time he's a big but murph and amir have made big free throws for us many occasions that, that's a strength though obviously, obviously getting to the line yeah. and that could reason why you guys obviously it has been a reason why you, you won a lot of games this year yeah it's important to us um but i just you saw it was it was maryland was going to the foul line we were going to the foul line and they were making i mean they were like nothing but net <laughs> and our thing was scud missiles so i do think that it i think it really really zapped our energy i do how did you see that actually playing out on the defensive end of lack of energy you know i just um our activity wasn't great, you know, like it was almost like it was like a four point game, a three point game, a six point game. And, and, and I'm looking at these guys like, fellas, we can win this game. And it just seemed like there wasn't a lot of life on that side of it. Um, and it, it, uh, it I just think it definitely affected us. I really do. Murphy's averaged five shots a game of the last three. How do you view that? Um, he's got to go find it. You know, I, I think that uh, we're not running anything different. Um, he, he's got to do a better job of finding it throughout the flow of the offense. You know, sometimes getting a shot comes from a great screen, um, you know, or a great high-low and things like that. It, it's not always going to come from just dumping the ball into the post. I mean, Smith from Maryland, 6'11". I mean, he, so you have to move better. you got to do that throughout the flow of the offense. So I think from last game, I don't really remember the other ones as much, but last game I think it was that. Um, so I do think that the better that he moves throughout the flow of the offense, he's going to get more shots because that's not enough shots. Do you want everybody hunting shots, so to speak, on the offense? Or do you want that to be their mindset that they're every possession looking to create 
an opportunity for themselves and their Not body. everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, I want them to attack. Um, we've had a couple instances with like Amir um, where first half he wasn't scoring and I talked to him last game like you need to be aggressive and you saw it. Uh, Murphy's the same way. Um, all the guys, I want them to be in attack mode. I want them to be smarter. I actually thought Isaiah did some good things, but his shots, I think three or four of the seven came without a pass. That He's got to stop doing it. It's leading to the fast breaks for the other team. Um, so be in attack mode, but be smart about how you're attacking. Coach, what's the sense of urgency like in the locker room right now, knowing that you have – of your next three opponents, I know you're focused on tomorrow, but your next three opponents have a combined one win in the Big Ten right now. You get, you, there are chances there to be had, so what's the sense of urgency like? Yeah, I don't, we, we don't really look at that. Like, I mean, tomorrow is not going to be an easy game. <laughs> that is going to be a challenge. They're a well-coached, tough team. Um, and I haven't even watched Illinois or Penn State, but I know those two teams as well. I watched a little bit of Illinois just on the TV last night. Like, that, that's not going to be a – easy game by any means. I can't believe their record versus how they play. But um, as it pertains to Rutgers, and that's kind of been our focus, like it's not really a sense of urgency. Um, we're 12-3 and three and 2-2 two and two in the league. I think that's pretty good uh, with what we've done and what we've dealt with. Uh, what we need to do is get a sense of urgency to execute a little bit better, um, get a little bit tougher when adversity hits throughout the course of the game. And uh, I think the guys saw that. With uh, Rutgers without Omar Yuri, I mean, you saw them without the, him against. He's officially out. Yeah, yeah. dislocated his kneecap. His kneecap. Yeah. It looked like he, his foot. I don't know if you saw it, yeah. but it was weird. I think it was an angle. Did you watch it? No, you didn't watch. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you saw him without him. Yeah. What, did, what changed? And is there benefit? That he's very him? good. No, I mean they're not better with you know. He's probably their best player, um, but I think probably Geo Baker. Uh, it was an emphasis on him. I thought, you know, Harper came in, gave some good minutes. Um, they they are um, they are going to try to obliterate you on the glass. Uh, they're going to try to maul you. Not not I'm not fouling. That's not what I'm saying. But they're going to physically try to overpower you. Um, you know, and probably Geo Baker takes a little bit more of a responsibility with with, with um, you know uh, him out. Um, but he's good. I mean, and, and I think that they're going to be tough for everybody. They compete with everybody. On the last game, the rotation changed a little bit from Wisconsin, where obviously Isaiah got playing time, and Brock was here and there. Uh, Michael didn't play as much. Have I should have played Michael more. Uh, I told him, I texted him after the game, I, I, I should have played him more. Uh, I think with Eric coming back, trying to figure out the rotation a little bit. Like, I like Mike at the four, probably a little bit more than at the three. Um, so I should have I, – I, I told him that because um, I think he's doing a lot of good things, bringing some good value. Um, you know, as for as for Brock and Isaiah, like I said, I thought Isaiah – I thought he was doing some good things. Um, he just needed to take some better shots, some more high-percentage shots. It's not even – he was necessarily taking bad shots. It's just a degree of difficulty of what he's trying to do. Um, but it, that's what it was. I mean, it, the Wisconsin game did not fit, in my opinion, the way Isaiah plays. I mean, that is a big, overpowering game. And I thought it fit Brock. Does that make it challenging when I mean, Eric comes back? I mean, obviously you, you want him back, but then the front court rotation changes a little bit, and then so maybe if Mott isn't, isn't playing as much, and then also you know Brock and and you wanted to get him more involved in Big Ten play, but you also obviously want to keep Isaiah involved as well. It's a good problem to have, you know. I mean, it's it's uh, I think it motivates everybody. Um, you know, competition is a good thing; it gets everybody better. Um, so if you have options, uh, that's 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 the old good problem to have, you know. So uh, kind of take game by game by game, see where everybody stands. Is, is there a time frame you that you? I mean, you mentioned that you texted him and said I should have played you more. Is it important that a coach admits to his players sometimes if he thinks he made a mistake? Is that is that a, a great part of building trust? Yeah, probably so. You know, I I don't I don't ever act like I have all the answers to the guys. I mean, I'll uh, I'll be the first one to admit. If I did something wrong, I'm not going to be perfect. They're not going to be perfect. The refs aren't going to be perfect. It's just a matter of, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's not. I'm not one of those guys that's constantly telling them I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Um, now, when I take a step back and I evaluate the game and I have time, I'm normally right. You know, 
from my evaluation. Uh, throughout the course of the game, you're going to make mistakes. Um, you may think you see something and you may miss it. Um, so if you see that, yeah, be, be upfront and honest with them, uh, whoever it may be. And, uh, you know, that's, I'm always going to do that. Is there a time frame where you think you can start extending Eric beyond the 20 minutes that you're – I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I kind of talk to my trainer every day, and, and I would assume that will increase. Uh, that would be the logical thing. Um, but it's almost like it doesn't really matter as much right now because his conditioning is not going to allow him to play significantly more than that. Jordan, do you think that um, sometimes the, the fouls – that he yeah, yeah, I think it does. It doesn't get, you know, I mean, they play pretty physical with him. Sometimes officials let, him, let others get away with it and maybe not him. I mean, it, I'm not trying to You're trying to set me up. I'm not trying to set you up, but just for him mentally, you know. Yeah, I, I, it's again, it's like I said, I thought last game we didn't show the mental toughness um, and the mental toughness being maybe you don't agree with the foul call. Um, maybe you don't, you know, you're frustrated you missed an open shot. Um, or a free throw, or like you have to be able to get over yourself. Um, we talk a lot about, you know, when adversity hits throughout the course of the game, do you go internal or external? And internal means you just shut down, where external means like you, you rally everybody around each other in a huddle or on the court, even if you miss a shot or even if you miss a free throw. It's a powerful thing if you if you miss an open look or a free throw and you tell your guys, like, let's get this stop or you go make a hustle play. Like, those are things that we need to be able to do um, when we offensively hit a little bit of a rut or we don't agree with a call or something like that. A couple more. All right. All right, thanks.